Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Purpose University podcast, your source of inspiration as you seek to create your best life and be your most authentic self. I am your host, Dr. Eve, and I am so glad that you have decided to join me at this time. If this is your first time tuning in, I want to say thank you for checking out the show, and I certainly hope you'll come back for more. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, y'all, I want to welcome you back to the Purpose University podcast. I am so excited to be here with Kara Robinson on today. Kara is a first-generation college graduate of uh, North Carolina Central University. <laughs> Am I hate care? Eagle Fry. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I went to Shaw, so okay. Yeah, I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's all really all HBC you love. Okay, yes. all right. We know who started it. Oh I have to. Ooh, okay. yes I did. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm really glad to be here with you on today. Thank you for coming onto the show and being willing to share the story. Yes, thank you for having me. Oh, you're so very welcome. So very welcome. So I don't want to say any more about you. I want to let you take the floor. Um, tell us about yourself. Who are you? What is it that you do? What is your story? Let's see. So... <laughs> And lately, I've been sharing my story a lot, so I think that's a sign because I have a really strong story that I need to share. I was born in Minnesota, and both of my parents are recovering drug addicts, so that plays a huge part in my life. Mm. I was born deaf in one ear, uh, so when it came to schooling, it was more like special education where my mom fought back and was like, no, she's fine to go to the general classroom. And so um, I still had to do speech and stuff throughout school years and all that. So that was kind of like a struggle. But in my mind, my mom always said, you have to do good in school. You have to go to school. You have to go to college. And so like I shared in my bio, we moved around a lot. So that played another big part. And eventually um, my teenage years, we were taken away and put in foster care. And so for most people, they will probably just give up or say there's no hope. But for some reason, I still had that hope to keep pushing. And so... Um, and I've always wanted to become a teacher. So currently I'm a third grade teacher. So that was something that was in my heart. So even through the ups and downs of life, I said, I still want to become a teacher. I want to provide that safe space for other students. So maybe they're coming away from home from drama. They can be in my classroom and I can love on them and teach them. And so basically throughout my life, I still gave hope, kept pushing, graduated from Central in 2013 in December. And um, I was blessed with a teaching job in that January. So I started my teaching career like a few weeks after walking across the stage. Um, And that was pretty interesting because it was like, wow, this is something that I wanted to do since I was a little girl. I'm actually teaching. I'm not playing with stuffed animals or playing with my sisters. This is real life. And so um, that was what about four years ago. So I'm in my fourth year of teaching and I'm currently at UNC Chapel Hill. I'm working on my master's uh, for school administration. So uh, with that, I would like to be a principal, but I've been hearing a lot of things that I should go beyond that because I have a strong voice and strong passion for education and children and teachers. And so I might be looking past being a principal, but that's what I have so far. Uh, But yeah, so like I said, overcoming so many things in life and All the things that most people would just stop or give up, I kept pushing and I'm still pushing to this day because I'm going to grad school and teaching at the same time. So, yeah. That's the way you just laid it on us, didn't you? Right. I was like, that's a little snippet. (laughs) A little snippet. (laughs) Yeah. That's heavy. (laughs) But that's raw because look at you. You You've been through, I mean, there's a lot to be said. You were taken, you were put in foster care Mm -hmm. and you still went to college. Yes. What, outside of your parents saying go to college, what was it, though, that kept you driven in spite of that challenge to still go to school? What was it? Having that thought and that dream of having a better life than my parents. And so I just put college as in, oh, I'll have a career if I go to college or Mm -hmm. I have more doors open if I go to college. And seeing that my parents or nobody in my family went to college, I'm like, okay, that's why we're not really doing a lot in our lives because that education or that college piece. And so I think just in my mindset, I'm like, okay, college is going to open many doors for me. So I have to do that. Hmm. Yeah. That's really dope. So are your parents in your life now? Yeah. So my mom 
praise God. She's been uh, clean for just talked to her yesterday. I want to say you said 13 or 14 months. And so that's a really long time because drugs are really strong and it's serious. And so um, she lives in Texas now. So I was able to fly out and go see her. And we have daily conversations. She's so proud of me and, and vice versa. I'm proud of her too. So yeah. And my father, not so much. Um, it's like here and there, but it's like I'm real close with my mom. So that's good. I, I love that. And congrats to both of you for being able to reconnect and to be yeah. healing. You know, and right. forward. I think that's really dope. So considering all things, it's very clear that when you finish school, you didn't have even remotely the same support as some of us do who are first gen. Like we can go back to mom's house or grandma's right. house. What happened for you after you graduated? What was life like when you came out of college? So coming out of college, it was just like another thing in my life because thankfully, and I didn't share this, but my, my aunt, my mom's older sister, she took us in, I think, mm-hmm. and I was, uh, what, my freshman year in high school. So she took all four of us in and said, okay, we can't have you guys separated. So I still had a little bit of support, but that was in Minnesota while I was in school down here in North Carolina. And so... I think when I graduated, it was just like, okay, you're still an adult because my whole life I was being that adult um, as a child. And so it was just like, okay, you graduated, good, get a job, good, get a car, good. Like to me, looking back, it's like I was doing stuff that I had to do. It was no choice. That makes sense. So yeah, absolutely. It was normal to me like, okay, I graduated. Okay, you're by yourself, get an apartment. You're by yourself. Like you've been doing this, so keep going. Mm. And so with that in mind, too, what do you think has been the most challenging aspect of being a first gen, especially in trying to navigate life? Because while you are an adult and very, I got this, what makes it hard? So I think what made it hard um, and and looking back was there were so many opportunities at Central that I did not take. Like I, Mm. I try to be more involved with organizations and stuff, but I felt like so much stuff because I I had to pick up a job while I was working, of course, Mm. because it's like I had to support myself. Mm. Um, But it was so many things that I could have been doing, like being more involved with tutoring or going to visit different elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, just being more involved with my education instead of saying, okay, well, I have class until one o'clock and then I have to work at two to 10. Like I I didn't experience fully that college experience. Mm. So, yeah. So if you can go back and change anything, would you have done something different at all to enjoy it more? Um, Probably more, probably be more involved with maybe like the school of education, Um, probably like different chairs or uh, programs and stuff. But other than that, I feel like everything happens for a reason. And like I went through my college experience and it made me who I am and it made me who I wasn't. So I think, yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. So considering all things, you know, what has been the best advice that somebody's ever given to you? Hmm. (laughs) Um, I think actually recently my mentor and she's been my mentor since undergrad, but basically we had a conversation about getting things done or getting the doors open for me. And she basically told me to not wait for anyone. And I think like I had that mindset, but I was still waiting for somebody to come rescue me or someone to come do this or donate this to me and stuff. But it's like, no, you can't wait for anyone. So even when it comes to education, like applying to different grad schools, I couldn't wait for anybody to say, oh, here you go. Here's a scholarship to go to school. No, I'm just still going to go get my master's, whether you're going to pay it for me or not. So I think it's the advice of not waiting for anyone kind of stuck to me to this day. And that was recent advice. So. Never too late to get some good advice. Right. <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> uh, but that's real good advice. I mean, because yeah. especially coming from the first gen perspective and having so much adversity. Oh, man. Yeah, space you. Sometimes you don't know what you can and can't do. The confidence right. isn't always there, right? And it's being it's waiting to be saved because growing up, we want our parents to save us and help us, right. like we know others, other kids, families, and parents to do, right? Right. And then so just to be bold and courageous. So again, just I mean, I'm just in my head like, man, kudos to you because I can't imagine. We all have a different story, but you are yeah. you're badass. Yeah, <laughs> you are. I get that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> good. Well, good. Let's just keep confirming it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so then, kind of even talking about just again who you are, can you tell us what it means to be authentic, and how are you authentic in your own life? 
I want to say I'm learning more about who Kara is now because I can focus on who Kara is instead of focusing on my family or focusing on how the bills are going to get paid. Like I can be selfish with my time. And so now I would say as a grown woman, I'm able to figure out like, okay, Kara is a survivor. Mm. Kara is strong. She is confident in who she is. And so I think it took me a while, especially coming to an HBCU from small town, Minnesota. Um, (laughs) It was a culture shock. Like, oh my goodness. Um, And so just learning that, like, I had to own that my parents were recovering drug addicts, or I had to own that I didn't have that support at home, or own that I'm deaf in my ear. Like, I have to own that. So I think just being real about that and embracing that. That's how you have the authentic feel from you. But if you're not owning the flaws about you, but you're owning the strengths, it's like, okay, that's cool. You're good in these things, but what are you weak at? And so I think it takes a big person to say, I'm strong with this, but I'm weak in this area too. Mm-hmm. And so I think me learning about who Kara is, I'm able to say, yes, I'm strong in teaching or leading and loving, but I'm also weak in this area. So I think that helped a lot. Mm, absolutely. So I know that you are a part of the Big Brother, Big Sister program. Yes. So what I'm curious to know is how has your life experience helped make you a better mentor? And how do you serve your mentees? So I think going back to just being real and owning what I've been through and sharing that story. And I think that gives me a place outside of the classroom because in the classroom as a teacher, I can't be like, hey, this is what happened to me. <laughs> right. They're like, oh, right. my goodness. Right. And so where that space that I build with my, even with my mentors, but with my mentees, the space, that safe space, I can share, hey, this is what I went through, but look at me now. And Mm -hmm. I'm still going because I'm only 26. Like I'm still, Mm -hmm. I still got life in me. And so it's like encouraging them. But I'm learning too that everybody has a story. So also closing my mouth and not waving the flag of, oh, woe is me, woe is Tara. But what is your story and like how can I learn from you and so I'm working on that right now with my mentees is like learning from them no matter how old they are because they're going through stuff or they've been through stuff and it's like we can share stories not compare but share stories and learn from each other so word up so you mentioned having a mentor a few times since we've been on this conversation yeah how did you find your mentors so (laughs) (laughs) Uh right funny (laughs) stories Um, and ho- she'll she'll listen to this in the future too, so she'll uh, understand. But again, so transferring to Central, it was a nice culture shock. It was at the time because I transferred in my second year, so my sophomore year. But my mentor, her group, they were looking for. So she was going for like the Miss Black and Gold pageant, and so they were looking for new females for the next spring and new candidates and all that good stuff. And they couldn't really find anybody who had strong qualities. So they're like, okay, let's go back out in Central and interview some more people, blah, blah, blah. So for, I don't know how we got connected because she came out to me and was like, Kara, come to this interview, come to this, come to that. I'm like, okay. And again, me coming from Minnesota, I don't know nothing about Miss Black and Gold. I don't know <laughs> no fraternities, no sororities. So I was like, sure. So <laughs> long story short, I went to the interview. They liked what I said, but when it came to the knowledge of the, the history of everything about Miss Black and Gold or like the different organizations, they're like, uh, yeah, like we can't have you be a spokesperson for us, but stay in contact. And so I think with her even thinking about me with knowing not too much about me, that made me like, hmm, who is this person? So over the years in undergrad, we just clicked. And so she graduated. She became an educator. She went to Carolina for her master's. She graduated. Now she's the assistant principal so she's doing everything that I was seeing myself doing but she's actually doing it in real life so it's like wow like okay not is she just saying that she wants to do this she's actually doing it now and so like now we're in a a good space now where we can actually like get real close and talk and say 
hey, how did you survive this class at Carolina or how are you surviving now in the real world? And so I'm just thankful that I have somebody who's above me in levels, but I can talk to it and be open with because I, I feel like sometimes I can look around and see people like they're not even on my level or some people are kind of on my level, but they're not as brave and bold. And I'm like, I need somebody to push me because mm. I'm tired of pushing other people. And so mm. with her, she would push me, encourage me at the same time, but she always set a good example for me. And so, and funny joke is today's her birthday. So <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> nice. We're happy birthday. Right. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this, the conversation is really interesting as well, because when you said we went to undergrad together, I'm like, ooh, great mm-hmm. point. A yeah. lot of times we think when we're looking for mentors, they have to be 20 and 30 years older than us. Oh, no. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I like that there was somebody who was relatable for you. Yeah. And somebody yeah. who was close in age with you who right. said, hey, you know, I got you. Um, yeah. Peer mentorship is something that we, I think we take for granted sometimes. Yeah. Um, just because people are the same age doesn't mean they can't teach us stuff because there's a whole lot that we don't know. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So I think that's that's very dope of you. And hopefully encouraging to somebody listening to this that if there's somebody that's your age and yeah. you see them out here getting it, don't be afraid to make that person a mentor. It's not to be jealous or envious if they can help and you want to be better by right. all means. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. I love that. I definitely no love comparison. That. Yeah. None. None at all. Right. None at all. So I guess as we're you know getting to a point of, of wrapping it up, I'd love to know what's next for you. Ooh, me too. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, honestly, because I'm a lot of doors are being open. Like I shared before, a lot of doors are being open for me to share my story. So I can pretty much see myself doing more like presentations or events where I'm sharing because I feel like even though it wasn't the best of the best, but I was placed in that situation over and over to share that, to encourage other people. And so I feel like I'm truly here to encourage other people and build them up. And so I can see myself just being encouraging, whether it's inside the classroom or in the community, I can just see myself doing that, whatever that might look like. So Absolutely. Yeah. So if there was any piece of advice that you could give to listeners that are currently first generation students or those who've graduated because you walk both roads now. Right. What advice would you give? What do you want people to walk away with for today? I would say, and this might sound silly, but I would say stay in your lane, like focus on yourself. It's easy to look in different lanes and say, oh, they're doing that or they're over here. But once you focus on yourself and focus on your desires, you'll get very far in life. And granted, yeah, you need to ask for help. But at the same time, always go back to what do you want to do and you can do anything. So don't have anybody say, oh, there's not enough money for that because there is. (laughs) So... (laughs) Some money somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. right. All right. Now, where in these social media, internet space can we find you? Ooh. So, uh, of course, Instagram is my favorite. So, I'm M I S S K underscore Robinson. So, Miss K underscore Robinson on Instagram. I'm trying to start up a new, fresh Twitter page, but that's still up in the works. But it's X Para L Robinson on Twitter. And then, of course, on Facebook, Kara Robinson. So I'm everywhere. <laughs> yeah, hey, no, no, another one with that. I think most of us are. So, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, well, look, Kara, thank you so much for taking the time again today yeah, to come on for and for sharing. And I'm definitely inspired myself. Like, it's, yeah. this is always fun. But um, until the next time, take care of yourself. All right. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in. Before you go, just a few things to note. Uh, First and foremost, let's get connected on Instagram and or LinkedIn. You can find me at E-V-E-H-U-D-S-O-N-P-H-D on both social networks. Don't forget to head on over to check out my site at www.evehudsonphd.com. And if you should decide to purchase a book or apparel just for listening to this podcast, you get 10% off of your order. Just use the code podcast when you check out. Last, but certainly not the least, in all that you do, remember to be resilient, authentic, and intentional. I'm out.